Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank God for the opportunity God has given us to be back together uh, this morning to worship, to honor the Lord, and give God thanksgiving, uh, give Him praise. want to thank you uh, for joining us online or outside or wherever you may be joining uh, from this morning as we come together to worship God. Uh, I want to know today, is God been good to you? Amen. amen. Has God really been good to you? Would you say Amen. Amen. We want to praise him, honor the name of the Lord, and give God thanksgiving for this day uh, that he has given us to worship, to honor him, uh, and to lift up his name together and give him praise. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for this, uh, uh, the freedom that we have uh, to come together to worship him and give God thanksgiving, and uh, just want to give him praise. I want to, en- I want to encourage you, uh, if you do not have the Poobies Chapel app downloaded, please download that app, uh, and on that you can find our bulletin, uh, which is right in the bottom uh, of your app. Just click it, it comes up, gives you all of our announcements, all the things that are happening. Uh, and uh, we praise the Lord for those opportunities that God is giving us. Uh, one of those things is our back to school blessing, which is going to happen on August the 13th on a Friday night. Uh, we are giving out school supplies, clothing, uh, other, uh, other household items to help uh, our students to be able to go back to school. Uh, that is going to be on Friday night. We need more uh, volunteers uh, for that. So if you could volunteer, please let us know. Uh, we want to, we want to help all the families that we can, all of our friends and students uh, right here in our community. So that is, again, August the 13th. Send it out. Get on our social media sites and let uh, people know uh, and encourage them to come. And then also, uh, they're going to be a back-to-school splash on uh, August the uh, 21st, uh, which is uh, the next Saturday. Uh, Not next Saturday, but the one after our back-to-school blessing, uh, which will be August the 21st. What date? August 21st, uh, we're having a celebration for our kids, our students going back to school here on that Saturday. Uh, so please remember that. We're looking forward to these uh, great opportunities that we have uh, to uh, be together, to worship the Lord, to be able to help others and be an encouragement to them in life. And I'm so thankful today uh, that God is in control and God allows us to be part of so many people's lives. I want to ask you to stand together as we prepare our heart this morning to worship and honor the Lord together and give God thanksgiving. Uh, I just want to praise him for being so good. I want to ask you to be much in prayer for uh, Mary Taylor's brother who had uh, open heart surgery this week. So please remember him in prayer. And also uh, Larry Story, uh, as he recovers from surgery, please remember him in prayer also. And uh, Kia Eldridge, who has uh, went back to the hospital uh, this week. So please remember her. Uh, The Lord just lift her up. And also Elaine Reed, uh, please remember her. And uh, we have a very special friend uh, that has uh, uh, cancer. So please uh, remember him in prayer, if you will, as he faces of surgery in August, uh, so please remember him. Uh, also remember Lori uh, Curtis in prayer. The Lord just lift her up uh, and just meet her needs and continue to pray for uh, Jennifer Dula's uh, mother uh, uh, in rehabs at the fall, so please remember her in prayer. And then uh, remember a very special family today at 2 o'clock uh, having a memorial service here uh, at our church. Let's pray for them that God will bless them, uh, lift them up, encourage their hearts in a special way. And I'm so thankful today that we have a comforter, amen? Uh, his name is Jesus. Jesus, and he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Aren't you glad that he's alive and well today? Amen. How many of you can believe? And how many of you know you can lean on the Lord? I'm glad that he has made himself very present in our life, and we want to give him praise. And please, I remember our community. Uh, I know there's uh, people who have COVID, and those numbers are, are rising up. So I want to encourage you, if you uh, feel bad in any way, uh, if you have a runny nose, if you feel like uh, that you have been in contact with somebody, please uh, uh, don't, uh, don't attend that church uh, in person. Please do it online until, uh, until you are cleared or ready to roll uh, so uh, that we can uh, try to minimize the uh, spread here in our own uh, in our own community and church community uh, so please remember that in prayer remember the people uh, in our community I know there's uh, uh, there's many that have uh, that have COVID so please pray for them uh, the Lord just lift them up in a special way so this time uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer maybe today you say you know something I got special uh, a special object on my heart or somebody I want to pray for uh, this morning would you just slip your hand up in the air uh, as a praise to the Lord that he's able amen how many of you believe he's able Before we pray, let's just do what God said in his word. The Bible says this, and it's in the book of Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 37. The Bible lets us know that something impossible was about to happen. That Mary was going to have a baby, and his name is going to be Jesus. And he said, for for with God, nothing shall be impossible. 
How many of you believe today as you pray that nothing is impossible with God? Amen. Let's trust Him together. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege you give us this morning, God, to gather, to pray, to worship, to honor your name, God, to know that you are King of kings, you are Lord of lords. And God, there's absolutely nothing uh, that you cannot do. And Lord, I want to thank you and praise you for it. God, thank you for the opportunity you give us this morning, God, and the freedom uh, that you've given us to come together to worship. God, we do not take lightly, God, Lord, the men, women, boys, and girls who uh, sacrifice their very life so that together, how we could come and have freedom of worship, have freedom, God, to give you praise, freedom, Lord, to hear your word. How God, thank you for a Bible this morning, God. How Lord, I thank you that you have given us the opportunity to come together, how to hear what you are speaking how, into our lives. And Father, we pray how, this morning, God, just for this service, that you would bless our hearts, God, you would open our lives, Lord, to hear your voice. I pray, God, you would drive back anything, how, Lord, that Satan would try to bring forth, God, to keep us from hearing what you want to say in our lives, God, how you want to speak to us us. We pray for your protection, your blessing. How God, we pray around this how whole, uh, God, around this sanctuary, around this whole property, God. You have said as it were a canopy of grace, or that every single person, God, how that enters in or watches, how Lord online or hears us through our community, how God would come to know you as Savior and Lord and would hear your word like never before. And God, help us to understand, Lord, where we are according to your word. How God, according to prophecy, according to what you are saying into our lives. God, thank you how, for your word this morning. Father, we just want to pray for these, God, that need a healing touch. How we pray for Kia. How, God, you would touch her, Lord, and Elaine. And, God, we pray for Lori. How, God, we pray, Lord, for a special friend we have, God, that needs your touch and healing power. How, God, we know that you are a God who is able to bring healing. God, we pray for Larry. God, we pray for Mary's brother, Lord. We pray for all these, God, that have been mentioned this morning. How, God, we just come before you believing and trusting you, God, how to bring healing into their lives. Father, we pray for our churches throughout our community throughout this county, throughout our nation. God, there will be a true spiritual awakening. Father, we want to praise you for what you're doing. God, we pray for our sick throughout our community. God, those families who are at hospice this morning, God, I pray you bless them, encourage them, surround them, God, with your wonderful peace in this hour. Lord, I thank you that you're able to walk with us. God, talk with us. Lord, I praise you for your ever-abiding presence. And Lord, right now, we want to thank you for the cross and the blood that you shed on the cross to save us, to forgive us, us, God, and to bring us light. Lord, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to realize you bled and died on a cross. Your body was buried. But Lord, we're here the morning, this morning, God, to celebrate and worship that you are a risen Savior. You are alive. You have all power. And God, you're able to do all things. And Lord, for every single hand that was lifted, every object, God, that has been given uh, this morning upon our hearts, we come trusting and believing and knowing, God, that you are faithful and you're able. Lord, we give ourselves We give this service. God, we ask you to speak to us and help us to respond accordingly. In Jesus' wonderful and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a great God. Amen. And I'm glad that God is able. Let's worship him together and let's give him praise together. Amen. Somebody. Wasting so much time Wanna move ahead But you're still lasting time Feel like you're running Will never end And you will never win I don't know who told you You would not make
It ain't over with yet. Amen. Y'all may be seated. That was sweet little Ella Hammond um, that was up here this morning, and I just want to thank her for the courage to come up here and sing with us. If you've not met Ella, Ella is a very special little girl, and she has such a sweet spirit for God. And I just want to thank you, Ella, for coming up here and singing with us this morning.
now learned it yes sir hallelujah aren't you glad for the mercy of God amen how many of you know that mercy came by your way one day and if it was not for the mercy of God and the grace of God friend we'd be in hell Woo, glory to God for his mercy y'all, this y'all morning y'all stand hallelujah. with us it'll help amen. you out thank y'all God for his blessing it'll help I'll, you sing better
I'm living proof of what the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you believe me now, you turn my whole life upside down, took the old and he made it new. That's just what the mercy Aren't you glad for his mercy this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord uh, that we have a God who is merciful, a God who is full of grace, and a God who knows exactly where we are. Amen. Uh, he has never one time ever uh, taken his eyes off of you. He knows where you are. And I praise him for his mercy. I praise him for his grace. Uh, and I praise him this morning that he is a God who is alive. He is well. And friend, I want to tell you, he's not old. 
He's not turned over. He's not waiting on you to come help him. He's a God who is very able this morning and capable. And uh, I praise him uh, for what God is doing this morning. If you're blessed, would you say praise the Lord? Amen. If you want to see others blessed, would you say praise the Lord? God is good, and I want to praise him uh, for his goodness this morning and the wonderful uh, grace of God and thank him. I want to, I want to promise you something. Y'all ready for a promise? I'm going to promise you Jesus is coming. We've been looking at in the foundation of the word uh, uh, what God is doing and who God is uh, in our life and how we uh, can be part of the family of God and allow God to work in and through us and to redeem us as this, uh, as this song says uh, that, we just, uh, that we just sung. This song is very biblical about the fact that no one in, the, in our lives, no one in the world, uh, no one from Adam all the way to the last person how he born upon the face of the earth earth is ever able to earn salvation or to earn heaven it only comes through Jesus amen and him having mercy upon our lives and uh, praise him for his mercy take your Bibles if you will and turn to Ephesians chapter number 2 Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse uh, number 19 uh, just a, a few minutes ago before our service our uh, a lot of our youth were all turned around with their uh, with their phones and can y'all believe they have phones Everybody almost has a phone. They were turned around and said, what are y'all doing texting each other? Because you know how they are. I mean, we, we sit and text the person beside of us because we just want, don't want to speak to them. We just text them something. Uh, they said, we got our Bible app open, and we're all joining the Bible app so that they can see what you highlight and see what you read. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. And uh, I, I praise the Lord for his word and thank God for the word of God. I want you to look with me, if you will, to Ephesians chapter number 2. If you have your Bible open or a Bible app, open where you can see the word where you say praise the Lord Amen. guess what you have more than two-thirds of the world if you have a Bible, you have more than two-thirds of the world's population because they do not even have a Bible. We're very blessed today to be able to hear from God and what God is saying in his word. God did not write the Bible just so that we'd have a book on the shelf at Barnes & Noble. God gave us the word so that we can know who he is and know how that you and I, our lives can be changed by what God says. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 19, the Bible said, now that Therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation. What are we built upon? There's a foundation in our life. You are sitting in a building that has a foundation. And so he said, the, well, we're built upon the foundation. Here's our foundation of the apostles and prophets. So the apostles and prophets did something. They gave what God said. They gave a word. And so Paul, in the book of Ephesians, is writing to the church at Ephesus. And he said, I want you to know what you have is beyond any kind of folklore. It's beyond any kind of tradition you have it is what God said and when you have what God said friend you have a foundation can I have an amen right there look with me in verse number 20 he said Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord I want to tell you a holy temple is not brick and mortar it is not sheetrock it is not carpet on the floor he is talking about our lives being a temple of God. Then he said in verse number 20, uh, he said in verse number 22, in whom ye also are builded together. So as a body, we are born again. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you become the temple of God. And then he said it is us together that becomes his uh, building, his place to worship and habitation of God through the Spirit. For some time now, we have been talking about and looking at what a foundation is. What does it mean to have a foundation in your life? I want to say that in a, in a world that seems to be changing, it used to be changing yearly, or it used to be changing sometimes monthly, but I want to tell you our world is changing hourly. Last night, I stopped to get gas. Anybody ever done that in the last few weeks? And you was like having six heart attacks while you was getting gas. Amen. I went into the station and I gave the person money. Y'all know what money is? Okay. 
I gave the person money, and I'm like, okay, here's this. And we bought just a couple little things, and we, we handed the person money. It was real money. It was a $5 bill. Anybody know what a $5 bill is? They handed me back change. You know what my change was? It was $1 and a piece of paper. He said, we have no change. I'm like, where did it go? We've been over this for the last little bit. I was in my mind. I didn't say it to the young man. I, I, was, I was congratulating him because there's like 600 people in the store, and he was getting them out, like shooting them out. I know why. I didn't have to count, count change back. Amen. <laughs> he gave me a certificate for that store. When I came back, it's worth this much money. Now, I cannot spend that anywhere else. I can't go to Hardy's and hand that to them and say, hey, that station down the road said they're going to pay this much money on my gravy biscuit. Amen? Why? What is happening in our world? Friend, I want to let you know that change changed. Y'all get that, don't you? Within two days. All of a sudden, the numbers of COVID start going up. They pull the change off the shelf. Amen? There's something strange that is happening in our world. When we understand a foundation, you better have a way to stand. We are living in a world that the foundation is crumbling. The foundation is the only thing that can keep us surviving in this world and can cause us to thrive in a time when things seem to be falling apart from our eyesight. Hey, without the foundation hey, in our lives, we're simply, as the Bible said, we're on sinking sand. We become blown away by every wind of doctrine and everything that happens to come our way. We begin to grab it and try to hold on to it as something that is tangible and going to keep us where we need to be. But what happens when we do not have the right foundation in our life, we are left uh, for the enemy to destroy our lives. I've said over and over almost 18 times now what a foundation is. It means to settle down. It is something that is the substructure. It is built to hold up on, uh, to hold whatever is on it up. And I want to tell you about God's Word. It will hold you up. Amen. I want to tell you, in times of storm, get into the Word. In times of doubt, get into the Word. In times of fear, let's get into the Word. Let God fill our lives with a foundation that is unmovable. But we have been talking about and looking at the uncertainty of times. For the last uh, couple of weeks, we have been talking about and looking at uh, some prophecy that is happening in the Word. I want you to take your Bible. Please leave your Bibles open. I want you to take your Bible and go to the book of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew is the first uh, New Testament book, Matthew chapter number 24. And just to paint the picture while you're turning to Matthew chapter 24, what is happening is Jesus is simply leading his disciples to know what is going to happen in the last days. He's been talking about it. Uh, They have understood. There's prophecies from the Old Testament about it. There's things that are taking place around uh, the prophecies that are going to come about the end time. And so his disciples said, Jesus, uh, we know we've had a great time with you. We've seen you steal storms. Uh, We've seen you cause peace. We've seen you uh, turn bread and feed at thousands of people. We've seen all these things happen, but we want to know, according to verse number three, look at it with me. Here's what they ask in verse number three of Matthew 24. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh, the disciples came unto him privately. So this is a private conversation with the disciples and Jesus saying, tell us what shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of of the world. Now, if I would have read this scripture in the 1980s, yes, I'm getting old. How many in here was born in the 1980s? Raise your hand. How many in here remember the 1980s? How many had some wild looking clothes in the 1980s and some big hair? Amen. If I would have read this in the 1980s, this scripture, whenever I I became born again as a senior in high school in 1986, I would have said, you know something, things, you had big hair, didn't you, brother? He had big hair, amen. I send you over here cheering. You You went automatically through them days of that big bush you had, wasn't you? 
when I think about reading those scriptures and thinking about end times, I'm thinking, yeah, that's in the Bible, but it's just going to happen one day and it's probably not going to be in my lifetime. I don't know. I know it's in the Bible and I know God said it. Whoo, boy, it's going to be great when Jesus comes because I have trusted him as my Savior. He's going to come take me home. But really, did I believe it? I believed he was coming. I just had not seen all the things that could happen that would bring him to that place of coming. I want to tell you something as we go into these scriptures this morning. The, the coming of Jesus is going to just happen. There's not one event that has to take place to, that is going to make Jesus come. It's not going to be, okay, yeah, we fulfilled this, we fulfilled this, we fulfilled this. No, Jesus is going to come in a day and an hour. The Bible says when we think not. So what are we going to see happen that is going to lead us to know how that we're living in the end times there's some amazing things we're going to look at this morning and, and some that we looked at last uh, Sunday was simply this uh, we looked at the fact that they are uh, that there's some things that happen uh, that's going to be seducing spirits y'all remember that we looked at those seducing spirits last Sunday and that's as far as we got I want you to take your Bible now and I want you to go to the book of Hosea the book of Hosea. Look at it with me, if you will. You find the book of Hosea. Go to the Old Testament. You'll find the book of Daniel, uh, about a uh, little past uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all those. You'll find Daniel. Then you'll find the little book of Hosea. Hosea is a prophetic book that gives us a lot of detail about things that are going to happen, but it's also a book of calling us to the place to understand. We're not just excited about it being the end days or excited about Jesus coming. We are here to prepare for Jesus to come. In the early 1900s, when? Early 1900s, I want to tell you there were groups of people that said Jesus coming in 1912. They sold everything they had. They went and sat on a mountain and waited for Jesus to come. I want to let you know something. That is not a biblical way to live our life. How we're to live until he comes. We're to worship until he comes. We're to tell people about him until he comes. But what are some signs the disciples said? Jesus, tell us what are some things that are going to happen so that we will know that it's the end times. We're looking at Hosea chapter number 4. I want you to look at it with me, chapter 4 and verse number 3. Again, I am not uh, just pulling out little scriptures. I'm just giving you uh, some tidbits of scriptures you can go back and look at and study for yourself and understand what God is doing. But I want you to read, I'm going to pull verse number 3 out of all that is happening here. He said, therefore shall the land mourn. What is the land going to do? Mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein. Everybody that dwells shall languish, it says. That means they're going to be in depression. They're going to be like, what is going on? They're going to live in anxiety. They're going to live in fear. He said these things are going to be happening. He said with the beast of the field. I want to let you know something. This picture that is up here is not your ancestors. I want to let you know that God said there's a difference in the beast of the field and man. God created us specifically with a soul. And with that soul is where God speaks to us, that spirit. But the Bible said, with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fish of the sea also shall be taken away. What is going to happen to them? Look at verse number three at the end of the verse and tell me what's going to happen to them. They're going to be taken away. Say, so what in the world does it have to do with the end time? There's more scripture, and I can give you those references that let us know that as the end time draws near, there's going to be a deadening, if you will, a, a missing of things happening in this world that are unexplainable. This, this uh, good guy, I'll put him that way, up on the screen, he's not looking for a banana. Where are they? He is looking for his kind. He is looking for other animals. I'm going to give you some statistics this morning. Look at someone and say, oh boy. 
I want to give you some things that happen, has happened in 2021. Y'all do realize that we skipped over 2020 in our minds and in our lives, and now we're in 2021, right? We are only into the eighth month uh, beginning today. I want to tell you some things that have happened in our world in just uh, the short eight months. Y'all know how short eight months is, right? Uh, it is short enough uh, that, some, that a, a baby uh, can be like, hey, yeah, we're going to have a baby. Woo-hoo. And by eight months, you're like, have we got the nursery ready? Have you got it painted? Are you Because he's coming or she's coming. Amen? Right. Quickly. Where... Are they? Kind of put your mindset to the point of if you were an animal, you are looking for others. And let's see what is happening in our world. When I think about what is taking place, there's an unexplainable, universal death of animals. Is that not amazing to you? I don't understand it. I've never thought about it until we begin to uh, study. There's a rise in jellyfish. They're simply deteriorating the, the, the marine health and the death of marine life. This was an article from uh, June 7th of 2013. In this article, it talked about the deadly red tide. Where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all of these animals just began uh, this, this, uh, to wash up on shore, causing millions of fish to die and wash ashore. In this article, it says, man in life is facing extinction. Can y'all hear me? He's facing extinction with one more generation. That is the article that came from scientists and from people around the world. That is from the global panel of scientists, and that was in uh, 2015 in September. They said, one, we are one generation from all life being gone upon the face of this earth. That is not a doom and gloom a preacher. That is not a someone that is trying to scare everyone. That is scientists who are saying, look at what is happening in our world. A CBS report, it said there is a honeybee crisis. It says there is a, there's a dramatic increase in dials. Up to 50% of bees are dying now, you say, boy, I'm glad. I just want to be, I'm going to be real honest with y'all. Can I be honest with y'all? I put some yellow jackets to death this week. They swarm me, and I swarm them. But we're using them. They are ashes, which turned into fertilized. So I did not just distinguish them. I want to let you know our world is changing. We can say it is climate change. Our world is going to say it's because there's not enough food and we're overpopulated by humans and it's causing all of these things to happen. All of these are reasons that are being given, but the book of Revelation says that there will be a catastrophic death of animals even in the tribulation. So what did God say is going to take place? And we read this in Matthew chapter 24 as we went down those scriptures just a couple weeks ago and we understand that Jesus said these things are going to come to pass and you're going to see and understand that it is the end Days. I want to give you real quickly that in 2019, how many remember that year? 16 years ago, 2019. Here's what happened in Brazil. There was a half a billion, half of a billion bees died in three months in just four states in Brazil. You say, what has that got to do with anything? Without pollination. Have y'all never watched the bee movie? Without pollination, we don't live. So what is happening in our world? I want to give you in July of 2021, July, these statistics go back to July the 15th of 2021. Thousands of dead Flamingos. Y'all know what a flamingo is, right? 
thousands died in Turkey. I'm not going to give you all of these, but in the 13th of July in 2021, 600 tons, 600 tons of fish died in Tampa Bay, Florida. One billion, July the 6th, 2021, one billion sea creatures died in British Columbia, Canada. Taking out all, I can go on and on. And y'all know the preacher can go on and on. I can continue to give you a list that will absolutely blow your mind. In Sri Lanka, there was thousands of turtles washed ashore in July. Whenever you look at what is happening in Florida, 738 manatees have already died by May the 31st. And you look and you understand there's some things, large numbers. I can really understand this one. This was, this was to 26th of May 2021. Large numbers of birds died in Washington, D.C. I really don't think there's anything living up there. They just died. You say, preacher, what is, what is going on? We are, we are so focused in little things. We're not seeing the whole picture of what is happening around the world. He said it in Hosea. He said it in, in, in Revelation. He also said it in the book of Zephaniah. He let us know that these things are going to take place. Okay, how many of you have, have you heard and understand that there is, a, there is a shortage of chicken wings? If you know that, would you raise your hand? You have ordered chicken, and they don't have any chicken wings. I have often, I cannot get this in my mind. Why are there not a shortage of chicken legs? Can't figure it out. But I do know why there's a shortage. Because thousands and hundreds of millions of chickens around the world have died within the last six months. Have the statistics that will show and let us know. When you pull up to get your Supremes at Bojangles, some of y'all's tongue done hitting the side of your mouth right now. And they say, we don't have. How many of you know that they did not have Supremes for a while? Would you raise your hand? I know there's some addicts in here. We're going to have canceling for you after class. Amen. How did they run out of processed chicken? I've never had a, my granny had chickens. We took chickens out in the backyard. She would lay their head on a chopping block, and we had the best time in the world. How many of you have ever done that before? You, you know what I'm talking about. Man, them chickens will fly for hours without a head. I have never seen one, supreme, one part. My granny say, well, this is a leg, this is a wing, and this is the supreme. <laughs> no, it is parts. That they have mashed together. So why is there a shortage of parts? Can I let you know our world has went crazy. When you look at what is happening, why? There was 9.8 million birds died in Japan on May the 10th. How is it happening Friend, as we sit here this morning, we, we understand in Dominion Republic, uh, in April, there were thousands of fish just washed up in a lagoon. There was hundreds of birds in South Africa, hundreds of birds uh, that just fell out of the sky dead. What is going, have y'all ever in history ever heard of these things happening before? I'm going to tell you what is going on. As we go forward, these things are getting worse and worse. God said it's going to happen. God said there's things going to come to pass before the end time. And we're understanding and we're watching even in the animals and the beasts of the field. There was a massive die off of fish in March in Japan. There was millions of pigs that died due to an African swine flu that came in China this year, you might want to look at your bacon and see where it was processed. Millions died from a flu in China. 
I can go on and on. And the preacher can go, 100,000 chickens killed in Vietnam due to a flu. There was 5.8 million chickens killed since November in Japan because of the flu. It was 1 million plus poultry died in, uh, in January in France. They were trying to get out. I'm just going to let y'all know something. We have a problem. When the food chains start disappearing, we have a problem. Whenever we are looking at our world, we're like, what in the world is happening? What is going to take place as we go further in time? I want to let you know that God said it before we saw it. I want to let you know that God said these things are going to take place. You say, oh, yeah, but that's just a coincidence. Well, I want to ask you something. How many other people knew over 2,000 years ago that these things are going to take place? God said they're going to happen. We're reading about it in his book. And he said they're going to take place. He said, I want to know where are they? What is going on? Also, There's waves that are roaring. I want you to take your Bibles and go all the way to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke. That is in the New Testament. I want you to look there with me, and I want you to see what God said is going to take place. Luke chapter number 21. I want you to see what is happening in our world today that is catastrophic to everything that we know. It is catastrophic to our economy. It is catastrophic to people. It is to our economic system. Everything that we have have is surrounded in Luke chapter number 21 and verse number 25. I want you to look at it with me if you will. The Bible says in verse number verse number 25, he said it like this. He said, and there shall be signs. What are they going to be? God said, a wicked generation seeketh after a sign. There's people that are just looking for some kind of sign to say, well, this is it or that. But God said, I'm going to give you some signs you're not going to have to seek after. You're going to know. He said in verse number 25, he said, and uh, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, uh, d- a distress of nations. Like never before, we're living that. We've talked about that already. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. God said there's going to be a change. Look in verse 26. Men's heart failing, failing them for fear. We are having more deaths than ever. People are afraid. Anxiety is taking over. There are, uh, there are mass murders that, that are happening, trying to get uh, some things that are in their lives. There's also uh, people are just, they are dying of heart failure because of fear. And we're going to watch this as it happens more and more in our world. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be. Be what? Shaken, he said. I want you to think about what is happening in our world. The sea and the waves roaring. I'm going to be very honest with you. I, have, I had never heard really of a tsunami until it happened in Sri Lanka several years ago. I'm like, what in the world is that? What has happened uh, that things are changing and all of a sudden here I am hearing of what is uh, taking place. I am an eyewitness. I see it uh, happening as so many films are taking place and so many cameras were up. How we could watch as the ocean itself sucked way out and all these people are sitting there going, wow, that is amazing. And every animal is running toward the hills. They understood. They knew something was taking place and then A tsunami came and killed so many. Then how we begin to hear it over and over. God said these things, these natural disasters are going to get worse. In 2010, there was a new record of a of disaster, of natural disasters taking place. There was a new record of 81 that had taken place around the world. That was 2010. In 2011, There were 99. Can somebody tell me if 99 is a greater number than 81? 
and we are watching, and you can go through history, you can go through news reports. In 2012, uh, listen, there was more. In 2017, more worldwide. How the number of disasters continued to increase. In May of 2019, in the United States alone, there were 500 tornadoes in 30 days. How many of you remember that? 2019. Never has happened in the history of the world. Volcanic activity is increasing every single day. All of these things are happening. And as they're happening, we are cluttered with things that are happening right here. And we don't see the things that are happening all around here. And God said, I want to let you know something. These things are going to happen. There is an explanation of volcanoes. It is very simple. It's found in the book of Isaiah. The Bible says that hell is enlarging itself. And as it does, it is moving forward toward you. If you do not know Christ, as Savior and Lord, there's a very great explanation. So why in the world is all this change taking place, all this climate uh, change taking place, all of this, uh, wa- all, all these global warming and all these things that we continue to hear happening? I want to tell you why. It's because the Bible says that hell from beneath is enlarging itself and is coming to greet those who do not know Jesus. You say, how is that going to happen? Friend, I want to tell you, read in the book of Revelation, you'll find out how that there's going to be a hell literally upon this earth During that tribulation time, volcanic activity is taking place everywhere. I want to let you know, go go with me in your Bibles, if you will, all the way back to the book of Matthew. Just couple back uh, to Matthew chapter number 24 again. Matthew chapter number 24. Say, preacher, why in the world? Y'all know that I'm not this kind of preacher. I don't like just to get up here and give numbers, but I want to tell you something. It should waken us up to see where we are. Friend, I want to tell you, we're in a place we have never been before. We're on the edge of eternity like we have never been before. We are so close to Jesus coming that, friend, it could happen this very day. I want to tell you when you look at Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 7, I want to give you something that all of us could, could and have experienced even here where we are. Look at uh, verse number 7. For nation shall rise against nation. Y'all believe that is happening. Kingdom against kingdom. That is taking place. That means not only the nation against nation, but people against people. I want to tell you as we are sailing forward uh, in, in, the day, in the present day, I have ne- do not let. Can y'all hear me real good? Do not let what is happening in our world and the choices people are making cause you to have a wedge driven between you and somebody else because they believe or don't believe in a vaccine or a mask. Be a believer and stand for God and love one another like God said. Amen. A kingdom against kingdom means that there's things being stirred up in life uh, where these who used to be with these are now, are, are now against these. Hey, I want to tell you, let's get on our knees and face God and worship God and honor God together and let God be God of our lives. If things of this world will drive a wedge between those who believe, friend, we don't have a lot we believe in. The Bible lets us know. I want you to look at it with me. In verse number 27, he said, There shall be famines. He said, There's not a famine where we are. They are giving away food everywhere. Can I let you know something? If we have no bees, we have no what? Food. It is going to happen. The Bible said there's going to be famines. Our world right now, as we are sitting in this comfortable building, our world, most of the population, two-thirds of the people are living in the place where they only have one, a partial meal every day if they have that. We live in a place where we have access to food. There's places Full of famine. The Bible says in verse number 27, there's going to be pestilence. That word pestilence is the same word that we have, means diseases. It is, it is where we are now. That word, the word pandemic, actually comes out of the word pestilence. Are we in what they call a pandemic? 
He said it's going to happen. It has never happened on the way that it's happening now worldwide. But listen to what he said, and earthquakes. I want to ask you something in this building uh, this morning. As you are, you are sitting in Hudson, North Carolina. Y'all know where that is? Anybody know where, if you know where Hudson is, say, oh, yeah. It's going to make sure. Can I let you and I ask you a question? Have you ever felt an earthquake in Hudson, North Carolina? Absolutely. Just a few months ago, while we were in this building, about 9 a.m. in the morning, there was an earthquake happened in Sparta, North Carolina, uh, that we could feel all the way here that shook uh, the building. Thank God for a foundation. Earthquakes are going to happen. You say, preacher, what in the world and how, how, how can we? You cannot stop an earthquake. You can get down and hug the ground. You can try to hold it together. It is going to happen. It is going to shift. I want to give you some things real quickly uh, that lets us know. He said they're going to be in divers places. When I was growing up, I grew up right here in Caldwell County. Praise the Lord. Whoop. Amen. Can I let you know? I never. We may have had them. I was probably playing too hard to know. We slid down red bank mud. I, I mean, y'all know what I mean. How many of you ever done that before? How many of you ever slid down a bank before? Would you raise your hand? Praise the Lord. Y'all people, ain't you? Amen. And then get in trouble because you had your good britches on. I never felt an earthquake. I didn't know to be afraid of an earthquake. I didn't know that earthquakes were, it could even happen. We up in the mountains and we all good. There had never even been tornadoes come through that we knew of. Now we have tornadoes, we have earthquakes, we have all of these things that happen around us. You say, oh, preacher, that's just happening. Well, let me tell you, in 19, uh, in 2016 in New Zealand, they had 32,000 earthquakes. 2014 and 2015, a millennial's worth of earthquakes happened within one year on the earth. Big earthquakes have doubled in number. They have increased in number and they've increased in intensity. You say, why are you saying that? Because God said, here's what's going to happen in the last days. In 2012, here's what was said. An earthquake expert said this. Are y'all ready? And I'd like to hear his take on it now, but he said this in 2012. He said, the earth is cracking up. Can I let y'all know something It's cracked. The whole world has experienced things that are happening right now. Some of these biblical things. And I'm telling you, friend, I want to let you know something that is taking place. Right now in our world, we are ready and they try to be prepared for earthquakes that are happening all the time. How many do you think have happened As of January 2020, I want somebody to give me a number of earthquakes that you think are happening every month on the earth. Somebody just shoot me a number. I'm going to tell you what it is in just a second. Somebody give me a number. What you think? How many earthquakes you think we're having a month on the earth? 100, 500, 6,000. Here's how many they are. 500 5,139 earthquakes. Last Saturday, there was 117 earthquakes took place in one day. So how do you know that? You can track. How many in here has got Google? Would you say amen? You can track how many earthquakes are taking place around the world. So what did God do? God said, I want to tell you what is going to happen in the last days. There's going to be earthquakes happening in diverse places. Did you know you and I right now, we could be driving down the road in in Hudson, North Carolina, and the earth crack open, and we fall down into it from an earthquake. You say, oh, that ain't going to happen here. That's exactly what people think about death. They think, oh, everything's good. I'm a teenager. I'm young. I'm not going to die. Hey, there's people think, well, you know something, I'm, I'm young and I'm healthy and all these things. Hey, can I let you know something? We're going to die. We're going to leave this world. Friend, I want to tell you, we're gonna, our body, we're going to leave this world in some way, some fashion. And Jesus said, I want to let you know something. You better be prepared because you are going to meet God. He has given that as an invitation to you and I. I want to give you one last thing. 
And as I give you this uh, this morning, you can look at all of this. I can give you every reference uh, that I have. I, I, I don't try to just say something just to be saying something. It's in the Bible, and I can give you the, the place uh, where we found all of this information. I want you to take your Bibles, go all the way back in the Old Testament, back to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter number 12. You say, where's Daniel? It is, you know, you were in Hosea. If you still have your finger in Hosea, uh, just back up just one or two pages. You'll find Daniel chapter number Number 12, as we're going to look uh, this morning, there are many uh, prophecies that are given in the book of Daniel. Daniel closes the book of Daniel uh, with these words and talking about all uh, of the captivity. He's talking about the thousands of years. He's talking about all the things that are going to take place. And so he gives that and then he lets us know, God does through Daniel, about what is going to happen. And so Daniel's uh, book was written and, and it was read. And they're like, yes, this can happen, this can happen. And all of these stages of life have taken place. But he said this in Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 4. Look at it with me. Again, I'm taking this right out of where Daniel is speaking about prophecy. He said, but thou, O Daniel, God did to Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. So God said, I want you to take everything that I've given you and I want you to seal up this book until a specific time. Even to the time of the end. And when you read that, you're like, okay, uh, God said he's going to seal this book. Well, I want to tell you what he has done to that book. He has unsealed it because now we are seeing the prophecies uh, that Daniel gave uh, so that we can know, as Jesus said, see these things come to pass and you're going to know that the time is near. He said, many run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. He said, I want you to know uh, there's things that are going to take place. The Lord has provided many things to reveal that they're in times. Okay, let's just let's just take the Bible for just a second. Can y'all hear me real good? If you can hear me, say amen. amen. If the person beside of you is asleep, tell them they just donated five thousand dollars to the building fund. I've got something I need to tell you. I want to let you know something that is happening with Daniel. And all of these prophecies that are taking place. You can go back. We've looked at Daniel before. We're going to look at him again as we, as we try, Lord willing, to, to finish up this uh, next Sunday. But as we, as we look and we understand where Daniel is, he's given us prophecies about them worshiping someone, a, a golden God, where everybody has to fall down and worship or you die. We understand that was not only happening then, it's a prophecy of the Antichrist that is going to take place in the book of Revelation. We also understand there's many more uh, time periods that are given in the book of Daniel that we have watched come to pass in our time. And so God says to Daniel, I'm going to give you uh, these prophecies. They are sealed until the end times. And when the end times comes, people are going to increase in knowledge. They're going to see what is happening in our world. They're going to look at the word and say, wow, this is what God said uh, would happen, and it is taking place. So I want to ask you, according uh, to our world and according to, according to scientists and what they have given us in, in numbers and what I have given you this morning, would you say that what God said is happening on earth? God said to Daniel, I want to let you know it's going to be revealed. You say, preacher, what are you saying? I want to let you know what I'm saying. Jesus is coming. We are living in end times. You say, yeah, but you're a preacher. You're just telling, I want to let, I want to let you know something. Our world is screaming we're living in end times. They are fulfilling Bible prophecy without having a clue that they are fulfilling Bible prophecy. Daniel said, I want you to know this is what is going to happen. I'll give you a little for instance. When I was, when I was saved I, in, in, in 1986, I, they would talk about uh, the book of Revelation. They're talking about, oh, man, I, I'll tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be two witnesses uh, that are going to rise up. Uh, they're going to tell people about Jesus. They're going to be preaching Jesus even in a time of tribulation for those who have never heard. And what's going to happen is after three and a half years, uh, the Antichrist is going to say, you've had enough. Uh, we don't want any more of that, uh, of that Jesus stuff. And he's going to kill Kill them in the streets of Jerusalem, and the whole world's going to know what we're like. How's that going to take place? We did not, in 1986, we still had rotary telephones. How many of you know what that is? Raise your hand. How many of you's fingers still sore from crawling grandma? Amen. Aren't you glad we didn't have to dial the area code back then? Y'all know? 
We had dial telephones. I watched. There's a young lady in here. She's probably in here this morning. Her grandma let her try to call on a... How many of you have seen this video? If you hadn't, you go to Kathy Triplett's page and watch her granddaughter try to dial on a phone. It is the funniest thing ever. Can I let y'all in on something? Our world has totally changed. We thought, oh, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but people used to have satellites in their yard. I'm not talking about the little dish on the corner. I'm talking about a satellite. How many of you remember them? Would you raise your hand? They were big as a truck. They put them out in the yard. You thought, oh, man, we're going to be able to see. Well, I couldn't. That cost money. My mom and dad weren't paying to watch no TV. Can I have an amen right there? It was like, nah, we... I see people sell it. I say, what is that? Have this box in there. They had a remote. Y'all know what a remote is? Man, they had a remote to move channels on that thing. I thought I was the remote. Channel three. Get the channel in there. Then they came out with cable TV. I remember cable TV. It was limited in areas. But you thought, yeah, Jerusalem... We, we can see what happens in Jerusalem, but just to be honest with you, it wasn't real time. It had to bounce here, 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 and then through to your house. Then they had all these communication things that happened in the 90s, happened in, in, in now in the 2000s. Now I want to tell you something. How many of you in here, in some fashion, form, you have a cell phone? Would you raise your hand? If you have a cell phone, would you raise your hand? Don't be ashamed. We know you got it. You know, right, right this very second, if you have a cell phone that has internet, you can see what is happening around the world. There are cameras everywhere. So how in the world how could all of this prophecy, how we're going to see all this happen, take place? I remember in the 1990s when Desert Storm happened. I'm going to be honest with you. I felt sorry for our soldiers because they were telling every move that was about to happen. They were like trying to trap them, if you will, in, in a media section. I had to say, hey, they're getting ready to do this. They're getting ready to do this. They were setting them up. You say, no, no, they what? I want to tell you what, they were. Our world is crazy, friend. And now, guess what is taking place? You can see any kind of, you see anything happening whatsoever around the world. You say, oh, preacher, that's just because that's just we, got, we, we got cell phones. Can I let you know something? Everything you do is in that cell phone. Everything that is, if you have a cell phone, they hear every word you're saying. They know every place you're going. They know every dollar you spend. It's amazing to me, they kind of know the thoughts you have. You say, oh, what is taking place? The book is opening. God is saying, I want you to know this is how it's going to happen. I want to tell you we are so close that in this very hour they could mash one button and around the world we would be a one world system. No change. How many weeks ago was it that I talked about us not having any change? It hasn't been long. I gained on the no change thing. When they wouldn't have a penny, they'd give you a nickel. Now they give you a piece of paper and say, good luck with that, buddy. Can I let you know our world is changing? You say, what in the world is taking place? I want to ask you a question, and we're going, to, we're going to close. The prophecy of nations coming together against one little nation is happening. The world coming together against this one little nation of Israel. They're going to be allies. They're going to come together. It is going to happen. Has anyone in here ever heard of the UN? If you've heard of the UN, would you raise your hand? United National, the council of all the world that comes together. There was a president not real long ago that did not like what they did and did not agree with them and they did not like him. And I want to tell you there's a plan that the UN has. You can look it up on their website. Where? On their website, it's the UN Cancels Plan. I want to ask you something. Have you ever heard of the agenda from the UN agenda of 2030? Anybody here ever heard of the 2030 agenda? Would you raise your hand? We've got some that have heard of it. 
That is nine years from right now. If you are over the age of 40, you know how fast nine years go. Nine years from today, here is their, here is their whole goal. And it may sum up what we are seeing happening in our world today. They're pushing for one thing, the United Nations. They're pushing a very interesting connection that is never seen before. Here's what they're pushing for. They are pushing for 20, 30, and an agenda. If you look, if you look you're going to see what is going on. They are doing this. It is called a sustainable development goal. All countries, how many? I'm reading this from their website. All countries, poor, middle, no, poor, they say rich, poor, and middle income. They're not looking at the people, they're looking at the income. And they say all of them together, the rich, the poor, and the middle income. They're promoting prosperity while protecting the planet. This is off of their website. Today, progress is being made in many places, but overall, action to meet the goals is not yet advancing at the speed or scale that is required. They have a decade, this was in 2020, they have a decade of ambition, action to take place. Here is their word about that. They said we are leaving in 2030. Their goal is, and what they're saying is we're leaving no one behind. They're including the whole world. And they have one idea, and that is that all countries, rich And poor leave no one behind. You say, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? I'm talking about when Daniel said it is sealed and now we are seeing it open. I want to give you some scripture. We have looked at this scripture out of Revelation chapter uh, chapter number 13, verse number 16 and 17, where the Bible says there's not going to be a rich or a poor. You're going to have a number, and if you don't use that, and that number is the only way you can buy or sell. They don't care if you have $10 million or if you have $2. You are not going to be able to do anything without that number. Can anybody tell me what that number is? It is the mark of the beast, and the Bible says the the number of man, it is 666. Our UN cancel that is happening worldwide, it said, I want you to know what we are doing. Uh, We're bringing the rich, the poor, and the middle income together uh, for one purpose, because you are all going to be one uh, with the same currency or piece of paper that they hand you back at a service station uh, that is going to say that this is worth this much money, and with no money in your hand they're going to hand that to you and say good luck we're all together everybody's the same and here it is you say preacher you just reading more into that I just want to let you know something praise God I'm reading this book and I'm understanding what's happening in our world they said we are going to bring them together here's some reasons why they are, their, their, their agenda is this. They want to bring everybody together. They don't want anybody, they say, to starve. They're going to bring everybody together to try to have the food that they need. But I want to let you know before they do that, their agenda is to rid our earth of at least one-third of the people. I want to ask y'all something. Are y'all people? They want to get rid of one-third of the people so you have sustained food enough to feed everybody else. Because we've already looked, the the honeybees are dying. The animals are dying. Chickens have the flu. Birds falling out of the air. I want to tell you, friend, our world is doing one thing. It is pointing that Jesus is coming. And I want to remind you this morning, Jesus is coming. You say, oh, that is never going to happen in my lifetime. Well, I want to let you know something. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter number 8 that the earth itself is groaning for the coming of the Lord. That it is a splitting open. That it is crying out, come Lord Jesus. I want to tell you our time on this earth is short. So let me ask you all something. They have picked a date of 2030, the year 2030. How many by the year of 2030, if you're still on this earth, you'll be retired? Would you raise your hand? If 
By 2030, that's nine more years. Some of y'all ain't going to raise your hand, but you do like to get senior citizen free coffee. (laughs) Can I let you know their plan is to change the world? You say, what is 2030? How many of you know that Jesus being born changed time? They have tried to go back. Atheists have tried to change it. Agnostics have tried to change it. People who are against religious organizations have tried to change the B.C., which means before Christ, that was taking place. And then after Christ, here we have, we're now living in the A.D. It all points back to the Lord. I just want to let you know something. He's the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Everything revolves around him. He created all things for himself, and he created you and I so that we can follow him and trust him. He can forgive our sins and give us a brand new life. In 2030, it will be the anniversary and the celebration of Jesus being on a cross 2,000 years ago. They're not bringing that out, but I want to tell you it was about, it was about 2,000 years to the year of 2030 that our Savior was on a cross. What happened to him? He died on a cross. They didn't put a religious figure on the cross. Jesus said, I lay my life down. No man takes it from me. He did it because of the sin of all of the world. And you know what he did it for? He said, because there's an opportunity for every man, woman, boy, and girl to come to know Jesus. All of our sins can be forgiven. He died. And the Bible says on the third day, what happened to him? He arose. What if on the third day, praise God, he just happens to come back? 2030. You say, oh, that's nine years. Can I let you? You say, you're making a date. I just want to be honest with you. I'm not making a date. I just want a date with Jesus. I'm going home to see him. I'm just telling you that the things in the Bible have come to pass within this last year and in these last months more than ever. And it's going to happen. And here's our part, our responsibility. We better be ready and tell somebody about him. Let's stand together this morning. This morning. Thank you so much for being, for hearing the word. I want to, only thing we're doing this morning is pointing to one thing, and that is that we all need Jesus. That song, Mercy, proved that we all need Jesus, friend. The Bible said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. This morning, I want to give you an opportunity That you know Jesus. You say, well, I just don't know about all that. Well, I want to ask you something. Do you know that the Bible says for you have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all of us? Do you know today that God loves you so much that Jesus died? He sent Jesus to die on a cross for you and I so that we could be forgiven, our sins be forgiven, and we could go to heaven. He could change our lives. Did you know today that Jesus arose on the third day so that we could live in the new life that he's given us? I want to tell you, friend. Today's the day. Now, the Bible said, is the accepted time. You say, well, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to wait till next Sunday. I, I, I want to study this house some more. Friend, I just want to tell you, it's in this book. We can help you. We can show you. But listen, while you're waiting to make sure everything's good, you might leave this old world. How about today? Right now, if Jesus came today, you say, well, I, I didn't take the opportunity to trust Jesus. Bible says you'll be left behind. You'll believe a lie. You'll receive whatever they say. Be standing in line. Just like everybody else with a number. Only to be lost in an eternal hell. Like a fire. I want to ask you this personal question this morning. If you died today, where would you be? Heaven or hell? It's not a matter of I just don't really, it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of where we are right this minute. Friend, we've took, I've took worldly information and brought it about in the Bible so you can see what has taken place in our world, God said would happen in his word. Friend, I want to tell you, God is proving himself to us and saying, I want you to know something. You can trust me. You can believe me. You said this morning, Pastor, there used to be a time in my life I walked with God, but I've walked away from him. Hey, it would be a great time to say, God, I want to get with you. Lord, I want you to restore my life. There's people in my life. There's friends in my life that's going to hell. God, help me to get on fire for God. Lord, let the fire burn in my heart because I know you're coming. 
I know, Lord, I love you, and I want, I, want to, I want to live for you. Maybe this morning you say, Pastor, in my life, this morning, while we're looking at the Word, and we're understanding the Word, I realize Jesus is coming. And I've got friends, family members, all that I need to rescue. I, they, need to, they need Jesus in their life. Listen, would you come this morning? I'm going to ask you. Listen, before we go any further, you say this morning, God is speaking to me about someone. God is speaking to me about my own life. I want to ask you right now, would you come? Would you come? Listen, it may be you, you may be the person in their life that God uses to shine a light to them. Maybe today you need to come and say, God, I want to pray for this person. You say, Pastor, I come every week. Hey, what if this is the week? Glory to God. What if this is the last opportunity? God, I want to come pray for this person. God, I want you to save them. I want you to intervene in their life, God. Help me to be a light to them. Lord, help me to be a light where I work. Help me to be a light around my life, God. Help me, Lord. I want to, I want to, I want to tell somebody about Jesus. There's somebody in my life today. That while we're looking at the Word, God, you have spoken to me about. And God, I want to come pray for that person. It might be somebody at school. Listen, it may be somebody, a friend you have. It might be somebody on social media that you have become friends with. Hey, it's a great place to tell them about Jesus, to encourage their heart. You say this morning. There's people in my life that need Jesus. Listen, would you come pray for them? I want to ask you right now personally this morning. You say, Pastor, I'm not ready to meet Jesus. If I die today, I'm really not ready to meet the Lord. I don't know that I know Jesus in my life. Listen, I want to, I want to encourage you about something. Today, God loves you. God has given us his word so you and I can see, wow, this is what God said. And today you say, Pastor, I just need to come. I want to I ask Jesus in my life. I want to I trust Him. I want to know Him. I want Jesus to be my Lord. I've seen my friends, my family, people around me that know Jesus. I've watched them. And I want Jesus in my life. I need Him to forgive my sin. Come alive. Listen, would you come while these are coming? While God is speaking? You say this morning, Pastor, I know I, I, I know Jesus, but I've walked away. From, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I, there's things in my life I need God to help me with. I'm struggling as a Christian, and I need God to help me with some things today. Would you just slip your hand up I, I, as a testimony to the Lord? God, I'm going to trust you. God bless your hearts. You say this morning, Pastor, in my life, I'm really not sure I'm ready to meet Jesus. If I die today, I'm not ready to go home to be with the Lord. Pray for me. Would you just, would you just slip your hand up? I'm really not sure I'm a Christian, but just pray for me. Listen, we're not going to come to you. We're not going to. We're not going to try to uh, try to get you to do anything you don't want to do. But we want to know. We want to pray for you that God would speak to you. Say this morning, I'm really not sure I know the Lord. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? Not sure I know Jesus. Pray for me, friend. Hallelujah. You say this morning, Pastor. In my life, there's people in my life that don't know Jesus, and today, listen, I'm burdened about their life and about their soul. Pray, would you help me pray for them? Would you just slip your hand up to heaven? God, I'm going to trust you, Lord, to save them and trust you, God, to work in their lives. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you this morning. Thank you for the word. God, thank you for how you reveal yourself in this world to give us the opportunity to know you, to see you, to call upon you. God, you know what you're doing. Father, all we're seeing is a, as you said in the, as you said in the book of Corinthians, Lord, we're just looking through a, a glass darkly. Lord, but your word is opening our eyes to see we are living in the last times, in the last days. And Father, I pray, God, that as a believer, as those who know Jesus, Savior and Lord, God, that we'll totally commit our life to you, to be a living testimony, to be a light to those who don't know you. God, to be a friend of them like they've never had, to see Jesus in our lives. Father, I pray with those this morning that do not know you as Savior and Lord of their life, God, that even right now, Lord, that they will trust in you. God, they'll be born again. Lord, I pray for those in our congregation, Lord, those who are watching this morning, God, those who may be listening outside, Lord, wherever they may be, if they've never trusted you as Savior and Lord, God, that this will be the day that they call upon you, Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I confess to you I'm a sinner. I believe, Jesus, you died on a cross for me, that you were buried and you rose again. And today, Jesus, I receive you as my Savior, I ask you to forgive my sin. Come into my life, Lord. God, we praise you for making it so simple. You said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be saved. God, praise you. We worship you this morning. God, we just ask you right now, Lord, I pray, God, that we would uh, let go of things that are keeping us from being who you have called us to be, you created us to be, you saved us to be, God. Lord, help us to be a bright light in this dark world. Father, help us to lay aside those things that Satan tried to tie us down with and follow you with all of our heart. God, I pray for these that we've lifted our hands for this morning. God, we trust you, God, to intervene in their life. Use us as a vessel that they may see Jesus. We give you praise this morning. God, we give you glory. We give you honor for your word. 
God, we just ask your will to be done in and through our lives. In the wonderful and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. Aren't you glad Jesus is coming one day? Amen. Let's be a witness. Let's share him. Friend, I want to tell you, get on social media, share our services uh, with others so they'll know. Listen, we need everybody to know Jesus. Amen. And uh, we want to give the Lord praise out on the Welcome Center. Brother Mark's coming. Out on the Welcome Center or the uh, uh, Resource Center outside, uh, we have these little cards. These are invite cards uh, to invite people to the house of the Lord, invite people to know Jesus. A lot of great information on there about questions on the back. Uh, if you've got questions about religions or other things, great place to go uh, so you can learn and know what God said in his word friend I want to tell you we're seeing some things that God said would come to pass and I praise him that they're going to come to pass amen and we're watching it happen Jesus is coming we give him praise I want to tell you I love you listen if you're attending today for your very first time thank you so much for being here uh, we give God praise for your presence and if you have not went by our welcome center please do so uh, we want to let you know how much we appreciate uh, you being here and uh, we want to give God praise and thanksgiving uh, for all that God is doing thank you so much uh, brother Mark's going to come and dismiss us in a word of prayer again I want to tell you I love you in the Lord and thank God for his blessings thank him we can trust in him I want to encourage you to do me a, a, a quick favor uh, right around your seat if you will uh, if there's things in the floor would you uh, please uh, just kind of pick those up make sure everything is uh, kind of tidied up we have a, as I said we have a service taking place at 2 o'clock uh, for a uh, very precious family uh, who lost someone over a year and a half ago uh, and are doing that memorial service today so and downstairs so please they're maybe downstairs setting up in just a few minutes uh, so please uh, uh, be respectful and uh, we thank God for being so good God is good amen thank God for his blessings. I love you in the Lord. Amen. Before we pray, I uh, need all the youth that's going to go with me today to come and sit right here. I won't bore everybody with uh, what I've got to tell them and what, uh, the instruction for them, but if you're going with me, come and sit right up front right here in just a moment uh, when we say amen. But uh, let's pray one for another. Uh, if you will, please pray for the youth group this week. Uh, we'll be gone all week. If you will, pray for us daily. Uh, during the day you pray for us we'll be having church every night uh, probably won't have church till about 9 o'clock at night maybe even 9 30 or 10 uh, we don't get in a hurry down there we ain't going nowhere so we got them pretty captive amen so uh, but you pray for us pray that luck God will move uh, in a great and a mighty way but I love y'all I appreciate you and uh, thank God for our pastor amen and uh, I'm telling you thank God for the study that he puts in I don't he don't get all that stuff just standing up here he's got to put in work to get it and I appreciate him amen and thank God for him let's pray father we love you in Jesus name Lord we thank you so much for your grace and mercy God we thank you God for your love God that you loved us so much that you were willing to go to an old Roman cross and bleed and die God for my sin God it was me Lord that you were dying for and God is for everyone God, you said whosoever will. And I pray, God, that you would open our eyes of understanding. Lord, this world is screaming, God, that you're coming. Lord, help us to not turn a deaf ear. Lord, help us not to turn a blind eye. But God, help us to be ready when you come. If it's nine minutes, nine years, or ten years, or ninety more years, help us, Lord, to be ready. Because we believe, according to your word, you are coming. And I bless you. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for turning my life upside down. Lord, thank you for rescuing me from an awful place called hell. I bless you. I give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.